right, lines 50 to 54, or 50 to 53 in book two, uh, we see that Laocoon has finished speaking, and that is signified by the ever-present uh, kind of coda here. So here Virgil says, seek fatus. So having spoken in this way, or, or having spoken thusly, with mighty strength, a huge spear into the side and into the belly curved, uh, the belly of the beast curved with fastenings he threw. So having spoken thus, he hurled a huge spear with mighty strength into the side and into the belly curved with fastenings. So the belly of the beast curved with fastenings. It, the, um, the, the spear, the hosta, stood there trembling and with the belly having been recuso, with the belly having been shaken or struck, the kawai kawernai, the hollow caverns, resounded and gave a groan. So some great description here of, of uh, Laocoon's um, defilement of the horse. And we can understand this as a participle fatus, so having spoken thus, or we can assume that there's an est that's missing there that's elliptic, and so we could say, and he spoke thus. Um, usually participial is, is the way to go there. Um, you can see all of the, the interlocking word order here, the synchesis, um, and how in, kerwam, awam, all goes together, but um, um, I think it's important to note that this, this line here probably sounds better if we take compagibus after kerwam, just like I did in my translation. So the belly of the beast curved with, so taking kerwam is sort of distributive, almost, almost participial, and then contorset, he hurled. Uh, a nice enjambment there to get finally the verb, which, which as I translated the first time, you build up and up and up with all of the various elements of the sentence and then the payoff there with the action. And then the next action, there's, there's, no, there's no anticipation, there's no payoff, it, it's just right there. So he hurled it and it stood there, it stuck there, trembling. And so then it, um, we, we switch to the kawai kawernai, with that uterum, uh, or that uterus having been st struck, the hollow caverns resounded, and they gave a groan. So there's some personification here. Um, first, with insonoera, they, they gave a sound. That's not incredibly personified. It's not limited to just people. But that gave a groan definitely is, and this is what Romans do, or or the ancients do in ancient poetry, they give a groan when they've been wounded seriously, gravely, or they're, they're about to die. And so we have our, our, our horse here uh, taking on the traits of, uh, of people.